Hey, my name is John. I'm a senior technical designer here at Build a Rocket Boy, and today we're going to talk about advanced variable nodes and how you can use them to create custom game mechanics. So, as an example, what we're going to create is uh, an arc where players can collect coins, and we'll save this value online so that if a player was to leave the arc and then join again later, their progress is saved. The first thing we'll want to do is grab an advanced number variable node and we can give this variable a name, so we'll call this coins. And what this variable will do is it will store one value per arc under the name coins. But we're creating a multiplayer arc and we want each player to have their own number of coins collected. So we can change the value mode of this variable to be per player. Now what this will do is store one value per player under the variable name coins. So the variable name is great because we can actually create copies of this um, advanced number and we can ensure that it has the same variable name as the other one here. And now what this does is it references the exact same value behind the scenes. So essentially these two variable nodes reference the same variable. Now I'm going to create the logic of counting up the number of coins that we collect. And I'm going to use this stamp that my friend Pablo made me, which is a, a collectible stamp, where, which has a trigger area, and whenever you enter the trigger area, the stamp will delete itself. So we can connect this to our logic. And for our logic, we'll need an add node. So I'll just grab an add node here. And what this, this node does is it just adds two values together. So value A and value B. And by default, both values are zero. So what I'm going to change value B to is one. And then we can pass in our number of coins collected into value A. So what we'll do is we'll get our current number of coins collected. We'll add one to it. And then the add node will output the new value. And we can overwrite our number of coins collected. So we we'll need to connect the execution as well. So on get value, we'll activate the add node and then on calculate, we'll update the value. So now this logic should work, but the problem here is that we have a pair player variable, which means we need to know whose variable we're updating. And we can do that. We can define that by using the player ID of the player. But now how do we get the player ID? Um, we can do that using the actor of the player. And we know we can get the actor from the trigger area. So what we'll need to do is convert the actor to a player ID and then connect it to our logic. We can convert the actor to a player ID by using a get player ID node. And all we need to do is connect the actor reference and then connect the player ID to our variables. So one thing to take into account here is that we want to make sure that everything happens in the correct order, i.e. that we count the number of coins that we've collected and then we want to delete the stamp. So to ensure that this does happen in the correct order, what I want to use is a sequence node. Now a sequence node just executes events one after the other. So we'll have quickly delete this uh, link here. On enter, we're going to activate the sequence node. We're going to pass event one to our get player ID node, which executes the rest of our logic. And then event two is going to delete the stamp. So that now ensures that everything happens in the correct order and we don't have any bugs in our logic. And now we can connect the rest of the logic up. So we have our get player ID. We're going to get our number of coins collected. We're going to add one to it, and then we're going to update our number of coins collected with a new value. But we need to ensure that this variable node also has the player ID. So we can pass in the player ID from the other variable node that we have here. Because whenever you either get or update a pair player variable, it will always output the player ID. So we can connect these here like that. Now that our logic is complete, we of course want to test it, but we need to see the number of coins that we have collected on some kind of UI. So if I come over here 
you can see that I've cooked up some pretty complicated logic here. And this is just a top player's UI node. And what this does is it just shows values on the screen and is per player and it works great. But we need to connect to this logic to the UI. So I could just connect it directly from the update value and connect it here and it would probably work. But the problem is that we might have hundreds of these coins. So we might have this stamped up and make a map with a hundred different coins. And connecting each coin to the UI would be pretty tedious. So what you can do is you can create a new copy of this variable. Of course, we want to ensure that it has the same name. So make sure the variable name is coins and we can connect this to our UI. But first we'll need to make sure that the receive notification on update tick box is on. So what this will do is that this will turn this variable node into a listener. So whenever you update the variable coins for any player, this is gonna fire a notification and output all of the relevant data. So if I turn this on, we can now connect on value updated to update score, output the number, so this will be the score value, and the player ID. And now this should work. So let's go in and test. So we can see the UI at the top, and if I walk into the coin, it does get updated, great. So at the start of the, of the video, I did say that we want to make this an online value. So that is quite easy to set up. All we'll need to do is go click on the variable node and change the persistency mode to be online. And now whenever this value is updated, it's gonna be stored online for this player. So if they leave and join again, the value will be saved. But first we want to make sure that our UI is initialized. So we need to either get the value at the start using this variable node, or we can use this event here, which is on online value ready and connect this to the update score. And what this event does is it just initializes the data and fires an event for it. So as soon as the player joins the arc, this data will be updated and sent to the next node. So now we're finally ready to test all of our logic, but since we're using online variables, we need to make sure that we're launching a multiplayer test. And this is just because currently online variables only work in multiplayer. So I'm in the game, I'm going to pick up my coin and then I'll quickly exit. And then we should be able to just join again and see if our online variable will load. And great, so I've joined the arc again. My online variable is loaded because it's counted my one coin that I picked up last time. And we can go pick up our, our last coin. And that's how you work with advanced variables and how you store values online.